Hi booktube, Lynette here and in this video I'm going to do something a bit different, something I haven't done before and I am going to do a book haul. Bear with me, like I say this is the first time I've done a book haul so I'm not sure how well it's going to turn out uh, but some of my videos that I had saved on my phone have become corrupted and the video that I would normally have been putting up today is gone so I had to improvise. And I'd bought quite a few books in July because July is my birth month. So I thought I would share with you what I'd spoiled myself with, basically. My birthday is right at the beginning of the month and I was given an Amazon gift card. And instead of buying ebooks with the gift card like I normally would, I decided that I'm going to start replacing some of the paper and ink books that I got rid of some years ago uh, for various reasons, none of which I can recall now. But I had a set of books by a particular author whose work I really enjoy and I'd gotten rid of them and I regret it. So the series is now complete. It wasn't a, it was, it was a complete series, but it wasn't a complete series and I'll explain in a minute. Um, and I was buying them as they were being released. So I didn't have them all anyway, uh, but now they've been released and they all have the same style covers and I thought it was the perfect time to buy them so that they had matching covers. But those books are the Realm of the Elderlings series by Robin Hobb. So like I say, the, uh, the Realm of the Elderlings is a set of 16 books and they are made up of, <coughs> um, and it's made up of five separate series within this world. I owned three of the series and half of another series and the last series hadn't even been released at this point. With my gift card that I was given, um, I actually picked up the first series and the first series is made up of Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin and Assassin's Quest. That was the very first series that I read uh, by Robin Hobb and that is the Farseer trilogy and I fell in love with her writing style. She has a very slow writing style um, so it does take a little while to get into a book so you have to be prepared to keep going, keep reading because like I say it is a very slow reading style and she does uh, take her time telling the story, she likes to give lots of detail um, and it just makes for a very rich world to be living in because this takes a uh, place in the kingdom of buck and like i say it's in the realm of the elderling so other books don't necessarily take place in buck they take place in other areas of this world and along the coastline that buck is a part of so that's the first series it follows fitz and the fall um there are two other series that follow fitz and the fall and i'll tell you about them later on uh, but this is about mainly about Fitz, who is a young boy as an orphan. He is brought to the palace. It turns out he's not an orphan. He's actually the bastard child of the future king. Uh, this causes the future king to abdicate. Fitz is given to the stable master to uh, be brought up. And during the first book, he's actually seen by the king, the current king, his grandfather who takes him under his wing and decides that he needs to be trained as the court assassin as per the title of the first book. Uh, lots of things then happen, there's lots of court intrigue. Um, the Fitz has the farseer magic of the skill um, but he also has beast magic that's called the wit. Uh, the two don't work well together and the wit is seen as something abhorrent to have, not very nice to have. Uh, people who have it are shunned from society and quite often they are actually murdered. So this is something that he has to keep quiet. He is supposed to be trained to use the skill but something happens um, to cause problems there. Um, and then the rest of the books follow on. I say the Book two, then Royal Assassin, that is then following on as he obviously is picking up from where he left off in book one. Um, and then book three, again, like I say, follows on from book two, but this time he's really on a quest to 
do some things. It also follows the fool a little. Uh, the fool doesn't come into it much, but he is Fitz's friend and you see a growing friendship and relationship there, which is going to carry through to the later books in the series. So the second series in the realm of the Elderlings is the Live Ship Traders trilogy. And this is made up of Ship of Magic, The Mad Ship and Ship of Destiny. These are hugely chunky books. There is no way I can hold all three of these in one go. So I am just going to hold up each book in turn. <clears throat> so this series is made, is actually set further down the coast from Buck. This is set in Bingtown, which is a huge trading center uh, for goods from an area called the Rainwilds. The families of the Rainwilds and Bingtown are linked together. They are very, very secretive. Bingtown protects the Rainwilds effectively from the rest of the world. Uh, the ships that they refer to, they have these live ships which have been made from a specific wood called wizard wood. It's wood that was discovered by the Rainwild uh, traders while they were excavating a city, a city that turns out was actually um, a previously inhabited by the elderlings, but it's been buried, long buried. The wizard wood is impervious to the Rainwild River, which is very, very acidic. Um, you can't you can't stand in it for long you wouldn't survive normal wood l doesn't last um wouldn't last even a day on the river uh so the rainwilders and the bing tank traders got together and they sawed up the logs and they have turned them into ships called live ships they subsequently found out that after a specific number of deaths on board the ship um that the ship will actually become alive and this is where Ship of Magic comes from. In Ship of Magic, you are following Althea Vestrit, who finds out that her father has chosen to leave the family live ship to her brother-in-law, her older sister and brother-in-law. Uh, her brother-in-law is um, employed on the ship, but her sister has no interest in being the Bingtown trader. Um, but Althea has long wanted to be the captain, she has spent many years on the ship since she was a small child um, and she sees this as a betrayal of her and the family's legacy. So the Mad Ship moves on from there. In this book, we then start following the, um, the fortunes of a ship, live ship who has been stranded on a beach near Bingtown because he went mad and killed all the sailors on board. Uh, so it's about how he's brought back to be put in service, basically. Um, and I can't really tell you any more than that, because to tell you any more, I'd start to give it away. So Ship of Destiny follows on from the Mad Ship, and we're now following the fortunes of Paragon, Althea, Malta, who is Althea's sister, and her husband. And there is um, a pirate that we've come across uh, in previous books who is trying to get hold of a live ship and lots of things are coming to a head in this book um, I can't really give anything else away because to do so um, would ruin it for you uh, but in this um, as you can see serpents and dragons are introduced in this which is I think in the end is what this entire series or whole over overarching series becomes about is dragons and elderlings. Um, and this is where we really start to see that coming to life in these books. Um, so yes, yeah, so that was the second series that I treated myself to. So the third series that I treated myself to and the third series in the realm of elderlings is the Tawny Man trilogy. And that is made up of Fool's Errand. The Golden Fool and Fool's Fate. Again, too chunky, can't hold them all up together, so I'm just going to hold up Fool's Errand. Uh, Fool's Errand, we go back to Buck and we meet up again with Fitz. And Fitz is in self imposed isolation, which you find out at the end of the first series. And he's basically he's shunned life, um, he has nothing to do with anything from his past he does have a visitor who comes to see him 
who does check in with him and just keep him apprised of what's going on. But in this book, uh, he is called back into service for the Farseer family and they hide who he is. Uh, in this, he becomes a character called Tom Badgerlock and he has to rescue his nephew, the prince, from the some witted ones who are trying to blackmail the kingdom. Um, and it follows the journey. It follows his meeting up with the fool again in this. Uh, the prince in this book uh, meets his betrothed and then in the second book, The Golden Fool, uh, his betrothed sets him a challenge to go to the Out Islands where she is from and to cut off the head of the dragon that is buried in the ice there. And basically the whole story hinges around that in the end. But the fool, his, his fate, uh, which is why the last book is called Fool's Fate, is linked to that of the dragon. He doesn't what he believes that the dragon is alive. The fool doesn't want um Fitz and Prince Dutiful to fight, kill the dragon. He wants them to set the dragon free. This is so that the dragon can be reunited with the dragon from the second series from the Life Ship Traders. Uh, because that is the fool's errand and fool's fate. It's the second of three series that uh, have fits and the fall in them um, and it well I don't know where they're going to go from how it's left in this one I haven't read the final series uh, I'm working up to that hopefully by the end of this year um, but I really love I really love Robin Hobbs writing so um, it was a joy to reread them earlier this year the fourth series that I invested in again fourth series in the realm of the Elderling series this is a quadrilogy this time a four book series and that is made up of dragon keeper dragon haven city of dragons blood of dragons i've actually finished dragon keeper just recently and i actually read this version um instead of on my kindle uh, and i thoroughly enjoyed uh i'm falling in love with paper and ink books again i really am this series follows on from the Live Ship Traders series. So we are back. Uh, we're not in so much in Bingtown this time, although we start out in Bingtown. But the majority of this book then takes place in the Rainworlds. We are following on uh, from the end of book three of the Live Ship Traders. And we have new dragons in the world. We have baby dragons. Unfortunately, they have been born quite sickly. Uh, they aren't the dragons that they should be and they are kept in basically squalid conditions and during this book they remember a city called Kelsingra and they decide that they want to try and find Kelsingra themselves which means leaving where they're being kept by the Rainwilders and moving on up the Rainwild River. As you can see, Dragon Keeper, the book's called Dragon Keeper. That means that people from the Rainwilds go with them. And the people that are chosen are all seen as social outcasts, mis misfits, people that should not have survived. People who are born in the Rainwilds become disfigured over time. Some of them are born with those disfigurements and they are supposed to be left to die uh, rather than being brought up. Mainly, we follow Timara of these who is one of those children. She has scales, she has claws for her hands and feet instead of fingers and toes. And she volunteers to be one of the dragon keepers. We are also following a young woman called Elise Finbock, uh, who is from Bingtown Trader family. And she has been studying the dragons and the elderlings and she decides that she wants to travel up the rain worlds to see the baby dragons and while she's there she decides to go on the journey with them up the rain wild river as a dragon and elderling expert so this book ends with the them traveling starting out on their journey up the river but that was the fourth series i treated myself to and then the final series i treated myself to and the 
final series in the realm of the elderlings and the series that i know absolutely nothing about is the fits and the fall series again that's made up of a trilogy and this is made up of fall's assassin fall's quest and assassin's fate so again we are called back to buck in this book and we are called back to fits who has been living a very peaceful life um, this time a very happy, peaceful, fulfilled life only something happens to disturb that peace um, like I say, I have no idea what happens in this series uh, I these have been released in the last 10 years and it's only recently um, that I've started rereading the whole Realm of the Elderling series um, I'm assuming that there's going to be something sad. I've heard that the final book, Assassin's Fate, is going to cause me to cry quite a bit. Uh, so I know it's the reuniting of Fitz and the Fool. I'm assuming it's going to be the ending of the Fitz of the Fool story. I think the Fool must have found out some information in his travels uh, that is going to cause some changes fits i don't know um but i certainly want to get through the rainwild chronicles um the dragon books um this year because i want to move on to this i want to know i want to know the culmination of fits and the full story i've been told that you don't have to read the dragon trilogy uh, dragon quadrilogy the rainwild chronicles to read these books um i'm wondering if maybe it does has some kind of links but yes i don't know i'm worried but i want to read them uh because i love the her writing so much i'm looking forward to really looking forward to actually getting into the series finishing the series but i'm not sure if it'll be by the end of this year or whether it's one i'm going to carry into next year uh but definitely one that i want to get on and read so then I've got three more physical books that I bought in July. I was going to try and do um, the uh, Kindle haul as well, uh, but I might do that separately. Um, but while I was looking for the Realm of the Elderling series, I got them from a UK bookseller, uh, national chain, not a local one. Um, my nearest independent local book shop didn't carry these books or weren't doing online ordering uh, during lockdown so I used the national UK chain that I love going to one of the books I couldn't get from them though so I did have to go to Amazon to get that one um, and while I was looking on Amazon it recommended me another book and it recommended me Winter's Fury by A.E. Rain and this is book one of the Furyk saga again this is full of mystery intrigue royalty it's a fantasy novel, it sounds right up my street and I fell in love with the cover and I'm really looking forward to being able to pick this absolute beast up at some point. It is huge. It <clears throat> So yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely going to be one that I have to sit and read when I can sit up. Um, it's not one that I'm going to be able to read lying down in bed I don't think or even sat up in bed because uh, it's quite heavy quite a hefty book so but I am looking forward to it like I say I love the cover um, and I'm very tempted even though I've not read this one yet I'm very tempted to buy the other two because I love the covers of the other two as well so we'll see when I get to that one so then the next book or the last book that I actually bought and chose for myself um, is The Binding by Bridget Collins I bought this one I was looking for Where the Crawdads Sing uh, by Delia Owens and I couldn't find it um, but the binding this blue cover kept standing out to me in the bookshop um, and I gave in and bought it um, it's about um, a young man who works as a binder's apprentice and they bind people's memories into books so that they don't have to keep them in their heads and they can get rid of things that they don't want to remember one day when he's going through some past bindings he finds his name in a book and it goes from there apparently 
I don't really know anything about that. I think it was having rave reviews on YouTube um, last year. Uh, so looking forward to reading it, giving it a go. I just kept standing out. Like I say, this blue cover just completely stood out to me. And I'm looking forward to picking this up and reading this at some point. I need to start making a plan to read books and not buy any more. And then the final physical book that I have for the month of July it was the book box pick and that was Splinters of Scarlet by Emily Bain Murphy. Um, don't really know very much about this one other than what it read back. Again, it's got magic, it's got royalty, it's a fantasy novel, it's a young adult book. It's not very big, I uh, should be able to breeze through it quite quickly. I'm not sure when I'm going to get to it though, um, but hopefully very, very soon. I love the sound of all the books. Um, I've, I've just opened my August book box and the, for the fourth box in a row, it's a book that I really want to read. So <laughs> um, I'd not heard of Splinters of Scarlet. I've not really seen much about it around Bookstagram and Booktube. Um, but what the, just the, the, the blurb on the back and this cover, stunning cover, uh, this red with this yellow la uh, with this white lace effect is just beautiful and the yellow writing um, I'm just really really looking forward to reading that at some point in the future so that's all the books physical books that I bought in July um, I'm thinking I might do a Kindle haul and do a separate separate haul for you on that and maybe give you an extra video um i hope you're all doing well uh like i said i've bought a lot of books this month i should say i am back to work i'm back on a full-time wage i'm quite lucky that at the moment my employer is in a position where he, they can keep me on full-time and i don't have to worry about money uh so buying these books i i know that a lot of people are not in the position to be buying lots of books um so I do advocate the use of the library and my library has only just opened up. I have a very small library. They haven't opened up fully, so I can't use it properly at the moment because they aren't doing their order in service like they normally do. Uh, but yes, I need to find somewhere to put all these books. Um, I haven't shown you, but I've bought one of those little Ikea trolleys that everybody's got in their videos uh, <clears throat> to keep books on. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going to have to buy another bookshelf and find somewhere to put another bookshelf in my room. So there we go. That was my July physical book haul. Um, like I say, I hope you're all doing well. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books, especially if you've read the Fools, Fits and the Fool trilogy. Is it going to rip my heart out? I really want to know before I go into them. I don't want to know spoilers. I just want to know. Is it going to rip my heart out? Um, so let me know down in the comments and I will speak to you all again soon. Bye.